Bueno, pues vamos a empezar. Os contamos un poco esta primera parte, eh, lo que vamos a ver hoy, que vamos a ver una introducción muy breve de quiénes somos en IEC y qué es lo que hacemos. Eh, también luego vamos a ver What is the Russell Group, que lo va a presentar la Universidad de Glasgow, lo va a presentar Mark. Luego la Universidad de Durham nos va a hablar eh, de Studying in the UK. Luego vamos a tener a UCL hablándonos de The Importance of Research y lo va a presentar Yasmín. Luego vamos a tener a la Universidad de Cardiff hablándonos sobre Fees and Funding. Eh, a continuación vamos a tener a Southampton que nos van a hablar de Entry Requirements. Eh, lo va a hacer Elodie. Después vamos a tener a la Universidad de Cambridge hablándonos de Admission Tests and Interviews y lo va a presentar Sam. Después a continuación viene la Universidad de Birmingham que nos va a hablar de Student Life. Después tenemos Student Services que nos lo van a hacer desde la Universidad de York. Lo va a presentar Scott. En Birmingham nos he dicho, perdón, que lo va a presentar Mary. Eh, luego vamos a tener Accommodation de la Universidad de Nottingham que lo va a presentar Yelena. Luego la Universidad de Warwick nos va a hablar de Teaching Methodology of UK Universities y lo va a presentar Steven. Eh, luego vamos a seguir con el tema de Employability, que lo va a hacer la Universidad de Edimburgo y lo va a presentar Doug. Luego vamos a tener The Impact of the Russell Group on Professional Realms and Commerce, que lo va a hacer la Universidad de Manchester y lo va a hacer Caroline. Eh, después vamos a seguir con la Universidad de Exeter y Taylor nos va a hablar de, de Understanding Rankings and University Jargon. Y vamos a terminar con la Universidad de Liverpool, que nos va a hablar eh, sobre How to Research the Best University for You. Y luego vamos allá a tener un minuto de cada universidad hablando sobre por qué debéis elegir su universidad. Y luego vamos a pasar a la parte de preguntas, que como os he dicho antes, podréis hacerlas en español y en inglés. Bueno, por deciros brevemente un poco quiénes somos IEC. IEC somos una empresa... Eh, pionera en orientación universitaria internacional. Llevamos 26 años trabajando para ayudar a los estudiantes que deciden hacer su, su grado, su posgrado fuera de España y, y normalmente trabajamos con, con distintos países, entre ellos el Reino Unido, pero no solo, porque también mandamos estudiantes a Estados Unidos, a Canadá, a Dinamarca, un poquito más eh, residual Suiza, Australia y Nueva Zelanda y este año también Holanda, ¿no? Bueno, desde hace varios años, pero este año estamos mandando muchos. Y luego, bueno, aquí os dejamos un testimonio de nuestros estudiantes y un poco para que nos conocierais y ya dejamos a, a los ponentes que, que hablen ellos. Yo voy a ver si... Mark, you can go ahead. Thank you, um, Sofia. Um, unfortunately, I don't seem to be able to turn my video on, um, but thank you very much for, for joining. Uh, my name is Mark Stansfield and I'm um, a Senior International Officer here at the, the University of, of Glasgow. Um, so I wanted to kick off tonight's session by introducing the Russell Group and, and explaining what the Russell Group is. Um, you may have heard of it, you, you may not. Um, hopefully this session will um, we'll, we'll introduce the Russell Group and, and, and um, find out a little bit more about it. So I wanted to begin with a quote, um, so this is from the Russell Group, which is we represent 24 leading UK universities, which are committed to maintaining the very best research and outstanding teaching and learning experience and unrivaled links with business and the public sector. Now, um, just to, to give a, a kind of little bit more information. So the Russell Group was originally founded back in 1994, um, and it has grown from 17 founding members um, to, to the 24 institutions that, that we have today. Um, Russell Group institutions teach a quarter of all undergraduate students in the UK, uh, a third of all postgraduate students, um, more than a third of engineers, and four out of five doctors and dentists are studying at UK uh, Russell Group universities. And we offer a really wide range of courses that um, colleagues will, will talk about over tonight's session. Um, and also just under 200 Nobel Prize winners have been academics or have associations with, with Russell Group institutions as well. So we're a diverse group of institutions spread across the whole of the UK. So some ancient and very old universities through to some more modern institutions. Um, and there are representations in Scotland, England, Wales, and uh, Northern Ireland um, as well. We are consistently ranked um, amongst the top universities in, in the world. We, we rank consistently very highly, both in UK rankings and international rankings as well. Um, 
particularly important for, for students who are who are focusing on rankings and who are interested in studying at kind of world leading and, and world class institutions. Um, students learn from from staff at the cutting edge of, of world leading um, research. We we are research intensive institutions. Um, and we produce about 68% of the UK's world leading research, which is worth about £34 billion to, to the economy. And I think it's often a question I'm asked by undergraduate students as well, why, why does that matter? And I think it matters because the research that we do informs our teaching at all levels of study. So you will be being taught by world leading researchers and academics whose research informs what they're teaching you, um, even at an undergraduate um, level when you're studying with us as well. Um, Russell Group institutions are highly regarded by employers from around the world. So a degree from a Russell Group institution is, you know, um, is, is recognised not just here in the UK, um, but around the world and, and many organisations actively look to recruit graduates from, from Russell Group um, institutions as, as well. And, and we do a lot, um, as, as another colleague will talk about, in terms of our engagement with business and, and, and things as, as Russell Group institutions as well. And we attract talented academics and students from around the world, um, as well as investment from multinational and research intensive businesses. Um, about 32% of students studying at Russell Group institutions are, are of non-U UK nationality and they're attracted to our universities by the quality of our teaching and the relevance and reputation of our teaching and our, and our research as well um, and it gives students you know the chance to learn from as I mentioned some really well respected academics be supported to get the most out of your higher education um, at university and also access to some of the best teaching and learning facilities in the UK as well. Now, um, not all of the 24 Russell Group institutions are represented at tonight's event. So in my second slide, before I finish up, I just wanted to provide a full list of Later. all 24 of the Russell Group universities. So as part of the research you're likely to do after, after tonight's session, you can find out a little bit more about all of them. Um, but just to, to kind of finish up my section, that is the, the full list of, of all of the Russell Group institutions. So um, thank you very much for listening. And I'll now pass over to, to, to one of my colleagues to, to take you through the next section. Hi, apologies. I also can't seem to open my camera, um, but my name is Lauren from the University of Durham, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about studying in the UK. So just as Mark has possibly already mentioned some of these reasons, uh, but some reasons why students might consider studying in the UK. We have a range of highly ranked universities. As Mark mentioned, we also have teaching that's designed to make you think, to challenge ideas and to learn practical skills. So it's not just about the knowledge you gain, but it's about these employable, transferable skills that you get within your degree. UK universities are also inspected by the Quality Assurance Agency for Higher Education, which ensures that they maintain their high teaching standards as well. You get to study your chosen degree from day one. So most UK degrees allow you to specialise in the subject you're interested in. Um, I know other countries around the world, you might be required to take multiple subjects, but if you don't want to, you don't have to in the UK. Many of our degree courses are also three years long, which means you could potentially be saving money on tuition fees and accommodation costs as well. You get a degree that's recognized and valued by employers all over the world. And in fact, in 2014, almost one in seven countries around the world had a leader who had been educated in the UK. And possibly the best point, you get to live in all these different cities, towns, in the countryside, by the coast. There are some beautiful locations. And I think, Sophia, if you click once, they're like, yeah. <laughs> so plenty of places around the UK, all these different locations you might not have considered, seen or heard of before, and you could be living and studying there too. And I think if you click again, yes. Um, so when I said you have a wide range of universities, you really do. Uh, this is a map of... Oh, there's some lines appearing, cool. <laughs> so this is a map of uh, the distribution of higher education providers across the UK. And you can see they are all across the UK in all four countries. In fact, there are more than 395 different degree providers. And between them, they account for around 50,000 courses and course combinations. So you really should be able to find something that you enjoy and you want to study. Finally, admittedly, all these course combinations might be a little bit overwhelming. And um, for that, the UK has you covered. UCAS is the University and Colleges Admission Service. It's kind of a one-stop shop for higher education in the UK. You can find information on all the courses and providers. 
That means you can compare them, look at all the different tuition fees, you can look at the course content, you can look at the different locations, employability, student satisfaction rankings, all the information is collected together on the UCAS website. UCAS also makes it easy to apply. Through UCAS, you can submit just one application to multiple universities or multiple courses. And they have some incredible explanations and advice and guidance on all aspects of this application. So how to write a personal statement, teacher resources for how to compose a teacher reference, and they offer help and guidance on how to choose courses, how to compare it, what you might be looking for. So I'm going to pass over to my colleagues to go into more specific detail about the rest of the UK. Thanks, Lauren. Um, yeah, the video isn't working for me either, but I will continue. Um, so my name is Yasmin. I'm based at UCL. Um, so to speak a bit about the importance of research then, I think one of the things that really distinguishes Russell Group universities from other universities in the UK is the fact that we have this real focus on research. So I think as Mark mentioned before, Russell Group universities produce more than two thirds of what we would classify as world leading research that we see coming out of UK universities. But if we go back several steps and think, you know, what is research? Why is it important? Research is really about creating new knowledge, looking at existing knowledge in a new way to improve our understanding of something with the ultimate goal then, um, ooh, I think I can start my video now, <laughs> um, with the ultimate goal then of uh, improving our lives and society. So you can see from some of the examples that I've put here, um, ooh, hang on a minute, sorry, some techie issues on my end. Um, so you can see from some of the examples that I've put here, um, you've got research in terms of discovery, such as the detection of water on an exoplanet, which is the example that I've used. There are innovations that are impacting on our lives. So to use the example of COVID, you know, most if not all Russell Group universities have been involved in tackling and understanding the pandemic in some way. So whether it's developing a life-saving breathing aid at lightning speed, um, or whether it's looking at the effectiveness of different measures of different vaccines, whether it's looking at the social and economic impact, predicting how COVID might pan out in the future. And some Russell Group universities have also led the way or been involved in developing the vaccines themselves. So I think the University of Oxford springs to mind there. And, you know, often when people think of research, um, an image might spring to mind of people in lab coats, you know, taking samples of things. But of course, it's not just limited to scientific breakthroughs. There are some really interesting questions that are being asked by researchers in the arts, humanities, social sciences, psychology, and lots of other areas. So you might be wondering then, how will this be relevant to me as an undergraduate student? Why is it beneficial? I think studying in this kind of environment really means that you are being taught by academics who are actively carrying out research and then bringing that research into the classroom. So you get to find out about the latest developments firsthand. And these could be discoveries that are so recent that they're not in the textbooks yet, which I think keeps things uh, interesting. Um, Research universities also have to provide top facilities so that the academics can properly carry out their research. Um, so we're all continuing to invest in our library facilities, our equipment, um, fancy 3D printers or whatever it might be that might be needed for research, but which you can then access um, as an undergraduate student, which again makes for a better learning experience for you. And then in terms of actual research opportunities, it's fairly standard at UK universities to write a dissertation in your final year of study. So typically that's about 10,000 words, um, or you might carry out an extended research project, which again is a great opportunity for you to carry out some original research on a topic that you are really interested in. But at a Russell Group University, you might find that you have additional opportunities to get involved with research, maybe even in your first or your second year. Uh, usually that would be in the summer, so some universities offer summer research placements for a couple of months, um, it's particularly the case in the sciences and engineering, where you can join a research team that's working on a specific project, you can see how research is carried out uh, and make a contribution to it. And some Russell Group universities also run schemes that allow you to develop your own research idea with a bit of funding uh, and support from a supervisor. And finally, just to say, um, you know, because Russell Group institutions are carrying out all of this research, that often translates into a larger range of subjects that are being offered at degree level. So within a, a single field, you might find quite a lot of variation. So degrees not just in medicine, but also in applied medical sciences, 
medical innovation enterprise, cancer biomedicine uh, and the like. So that gives you a lot of really uh, interesting and often quite innovative options as you start to think about where and what you want to study, which will be the next step for you, uh, and then potentially what you want to do with your degree after you graduate. So at this point, I'm going to hand over to, um, I think, Cardiff to talk about fees and funding. Good evening. Yeah, David here from Cardiff. It's very exciting. It's, it feels to me a lot like the Eurovision Song Contest, with all of these different videos. Um, and I'm here, yeah, just to give you an overview of what's changed in terms of fees and funding and what's changing um, as a result of um, Brexit. So as, as you may be aware, um, the UK um, has now left um, the European Union. And what that means is from academic year, from actually from, from August onwards, um, students starting courses will no longer be automatically eligible um, to the lower home fee that, that EU students did um, take advantage of up, and, up until now. Um, this is a government decision. Um, and um, it obviously doesn't include Ireland or if, if any students have um, a form of a settled status, so settled status or pre-settled status, or whole, uh, uh, British passport holders, um, you, you may not, this may not apply to you, but for the majority of students, who are from the EU, yeah. So you'll be eligible for the, the higher fee. Um, it's worth noting that fees are set by institutions, by universities themselves. So although um, you're not automatically eligible for the lower fee, some universities will be offering some, you know, um, fees along those lines, others may not. Um, some universities may be looking to offset this higher fee with things like scholarships, bursaries, tuition fee discounts, waivers, accommodation. So please be aware that it's down to the institution themselves and to check each individual university for their fee and or any scholarships or bursaries. Okay, so they may all be very different. At Cardiff, for example, we you have the higher fee, but we offer a scholarship. Um, and um, generally speaking, for those of you who do have um, British passports um, or who are UK nationals um, that live in the EU, the EEA, um, you will be eligible generally for home fees and funding if starting your studies in the UK before January 1st, uh, 2028. So up until the end of 2027. Um, just to make sure that um, of your own individual case uh, um, and that you are looking at and getting all the right information, um, we would advise you to, of course, look at each uh, respective university individually, but also check the UKISA website. So the, the website address is, is there on at the bottom of that page and it's on the following page as well um, for the most up-to-date information. Also be aware that the fees and funding regulations may differ slightly for each of the four nations within the United Kingdom, so England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland, the the um, yeah the the um, terms and conditions, if you like, may be slightly different. So make sure you check the relevant country and the university that you're applying to. I could just have the next slide. So also worth pointing out is, is that um, in terms of the fees, um, students are now required, of course. Um, with us not being in the EU and not being part of free movement of persons to apply for a visa if they're coming to study in the UK for more than um, six months and the app application fee will be £348 and also um, students are required to pay a health surcharge, a national health service surcharge and that will be £470 per year but that will cover all of your medical expenses that you, that you, you, you may incur. So doctors, nurses, medicines, um, anything like that. Okay, thank you very much. And I shall pass on to, to my colleagues. Hello, um, I'm Elodie from the University of Southampton. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the entry requirements. Yeah. 
So the Russell Group or universities in the UK in general, they set their own entry requirements. Um, so it's important um, when you do your research to have a look at what so the best thing for you would be to go on the university's websites where you can generally go on course pages and check what the entry requirements are and UCAS sometimes also um, well has some information but it may not be as as detailed in terms of country qualifications um, so I've divided this in two. So first of all, um, you would need to look at what the academic requirements are for your chosen course. Um, so that's generally an overall grade. And then there may also be um, subject specific grades. So you have to have a look because depending on which subject you want to apply for, uh, you will be required to have studied specific subjects. So for example, if you want to study engineering, you will have had to study maths and physics. Some other subjects uh, may be broader and you may not be required to have studied some specific subjects. Um, have a look also because um, it may be that some subjects are excluded um, within, um, within the entry requirements that are, that are required by specific universities. So have a look at what they are as part of your research. Um, have a look at whether they are achievable and then aside from the specific subject grades which I mentioned also um, for depending on which subject you're applying for for example if it's medicine or if it's health sciences um, you will probably be asked to have some sort of work experience related work experience there may be also some admissions tests and there may be also some interviews so I know my colleague after this is going to go into more detail about all, all those aspects one thing also I'm aware of, so generally when you look at the university's website, so it depends what qualification you're taking, most of the universities will, you know, display information about A-levels or the IB, um, and also generally, you know, about Spanish or, or different country qualifications. Sometimes it may not be entirely clear or very detailed, so my recommendation for you is to contact the university. There's always somebody, so within the international office or within the admissions team who can give you that information if you're unsure. So do that before you apply as part of your research. The other aspect as an international student is that you're required to demonstrate your um, level of English as part of your application to, to a university. So you have to have a look at what English tests um, are accepted by different universities. You'll see that IELTS is quite standard um, and it's used a little bit as a benchmark across the universities. However, universities also accept other tests. It's not just the IELTS. So have a a look um, at that. So also the English language requirements will be different depending on which subject you're applying to. Um, so you will have to have a look specifically for the course you're interested in, which are the language requirements for that specific course. And finally, if you have studied in the medium of English, or if you've done the IB, for example, then it may be that you can prove your level of English in a different way and that we, you know, that universities can accept the English that you've studied, of course, as part of the IB, but also if you've studied entirely in the medium of English and been assessed in English previously, that also may be taken into account. So check the websites and check with universities um, also directly. So I think I've covered most of it and I'm going to hand over to my colleague. Thank you. Evening all, uh, Sam from Cambridge here. I'm going to take you through a couple of additional stages to the application process that you may have to go through you're considering Russell Group institutions in the future. So one of those is uh, an admissions test and this does depend on your university and course choices. So if you uh, apply for a particular course at a university that requires an admissions test, um, you'll probably be wondering um, what it's for. The admissions test is very often specific to the course that you've applied for. So it's designed to test relevant skills 
levels of knowledge and understanding that you'll need for that course. There are a few exceptions to this. So there are some general assessments that will look at general academic skills, but by and large, most um, assessments that you'll need to take uh, for a Russell Group course um, will be subject specific. So uh, a useful way of preparing perhaps would be to revise um, relevant subjects, some of the concepts and knowledge that you've already covered, some of the skills as well that you may be expected to apply in the assessment. One of the other things that admissions assessments do are that they will be looking at your writing and your language skills as well. So very much tying into to what my colleague Elodie touched on just a moment ago uh, with regard to English language skills. Um, admissions tests are a great way of assessing these as well. It is also an opportunity for you as an applicant to demonstrate your potential to do well on the course that you've applied for. So they are really worth giving your uh, full attention to, to preparing in advance for, um, to revising for, as you would uh, any other tests that you might do as part of your school curriculum. There are a few practical considerations that you can take into account beforehand. So, uh, for example, make sure you know where you can take the test. Uh, so you might be able to take the test at your school if your school is registered with that university that you're applying to that requires the test. Um, you may also uh, need you may instead sorry, need to go to an open test centre that may be in your city. Uh, it may be nearby. Um, and of course, you'll need to make practical arrangements um, for getting to that test centre. There will may also be a, a registration deadline that you need to bear in mind. So, um, for example, the medicine assessments in the UK, uh, if you're applying for medicine as a Russell Group University, you're almost certain to be asked to take uh, one of two tests, either the UCAT test or the BMAT. Um, and there is a, a strict registration deadline for the different sittings of those assessments. So uh, do make sure that you know that well in advance as well. And there may also be a small cost associated with any admissions test, either um, charged by the university or charged by the assessment body that is pr providing that test. So, uh, again, something to be aware of. As uh, with all of the information that we, we give tonight, it, it's really uh, useful to be well aware of these additional requirements um, in advance of submitting your application to a Russell Group University. So make sure that you're checking the information in course profiles on university websites to see what, if any, form of assessment is required uh, and uh, some of those practical considerations that I've just outlined as well. You're also likely to find on university websites lots of practice materials um, such as past papers, specifications and mark schemes that will enable you to get a sense beforehand of how you're doing areas that you might need to work on in advance of taking the real thing. Interviews are also uh, an additional stage that you may have to think about depending on your university and course choices. Um, most commonly interviews are um, would be for courses at Oxford and Cambridge, but increasingly um, there are um, more universities within the Russell Group interviewing for some or all of their courses. So again, as I say, this is a stage you might come across. Interviews primarily are discussion based um, and there are an opportunity two ways. Um, firstly, for admissions assessors to get an idea of your potential to do well on the course that you've applied for. So um, they are really an interactive assessment of your skills, your aptitude, um, your knowledge base where that's relevant. So particularly in science and maths related courses, you may be expected to have a certain knowledge base in relevant subjects that will really Sorry. enable you to uh, get the that. ground running no, with your course. Oh, no. It's also an opportunity for you to demonstrate your interest in, in the subject. So you, in, in many ways you can uh, direct the interview oh, by showing interest oh, in the oh, topics that you're asked about. Hey. There are a few ways that you can prepare. Um, so, for example, in science related subjects, you might want to read uh, in depth about particular topics that interest you. That might be in journals or it might be in popular science books. In arts and humanities subjects, uh, make sure that you've read something outside of the prescribed text that you've had to do as part of your school studies and always make sure that you're reflecting critically on, on what you're reading. It's also a good idea to reread anything you've submitted as part of your application up to the point of being interviewed. Anything that you've included in your UCAS application, for example, um, would be fair game for interviewers to raise and to talk about. So make sure that you're prepared to discuss that further. 
And finally, make sure that you've um, researched what to expect on the day from the university that is interviewing you. Interview practices do vary slightly between um, universities and, and between Oxford and Cambridge as well. So make sure that you're familiar with what to expect. Um, this particularly applies to online interviews as well, which will be very common this year uh, as we, we sort of respond to the uncertainty caused by the pandemic. So make sure that you give yourself enough time to get set up properly, to test your internet connection, to make sure that you're somewhere quiet and uh, that you have everything you need, equipment, uh, pen, paper, that kind of thing, just to make your interview experience as smooth as possible. And the final tip I would say is don't over-prepare. Um, I think a common tendency is to, is to over-rehearse answers. This can be really productive though, if you, you're trying to recall sort of set speeches on particular topics rather than listening to the interviewer's questions. Always make sure that, that you're responding directly to what the interviewers have asked you. I'm going to leave it there and pass to uh, my colleague um, to talk about the, uh, the next stage about student life. Thank you, Sam. Um, so my name is Mary and I'm here from the University of Birmingham. So you've gone through the application process, the admissions tests, the entry requirements and the interviews that my colleagues have previously mentioned. And now you're ready to think about studying in the UK. What might you expect from student life when you start to study at, in the UK and at a Russell Group University as well. So the key point that I'd like to make here is that student life is really what you want to make of it. And there are a whole host of different opportunities whilst you are studying in the UK that you can take advantage of, or you could decide to sort of stay away from those opportunities and get involved in other things. It really is up to you and that is the joy of it. So what might you want to get involved in? In the UK, we have groups that you can join called societies. So at Birmingham, we have over 350 societies that you can join. And I'm sure the other universities here today will say the same. And they are basically student groups that you can get involved in, ranging from any of your interests, from the tea making society to a skiing society, to certain cultural groups as well. So we also have the French Society at Birmingham. So there are a whole host of opportunities around that. You might want to join a sports club and have a keen interest in pursuing a new sport or have an excellent prowess in a certain sport that you want to pursue further at university. You might just want to experience a new place and really get involved in what that city or place has to offer whilst you're a student and that can that could mean getting involved in the culinary scene that could mean going out and really exploring the clubs and the nightlife which is a big part of studying at a british university or you might choose to work whilst you're at university. So get a part-time job, become a student ambassador or work within that place that you are studying. Or you could disregard all of these things and just really get involved in the social life, meeting new people from a whole host of different countries and places and learning about their experiences and gaining your own independence, studying in a completely new place. So really, it is completely up to you what you want your student life to be if you choose to study in the UK and in a Russell Group University. So for the next part, I think my colleagues are going to elaborate on some different areas of student life. And we've got Scott here to talk you through the different support that's available. Thank you, Mary. Um, hola a todos. Estoy encantado de hablar con ustedes esta noche. Um, and that's the last Spanish you'll hear from me. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit about student services um, at universities. Now, of course, there are 24 universities in the Russell Group and we are all individuals. Um, however, you will find a lot of um, similarities. You know, these are these are the 
um, 24 most prestigious universities in the UK, if, if you like, so the quality of students' houses is very high. Now, the first thing on the list there is academic um, and study issues. So, of course, we understand you're coming to a Russell Group University because you, you know, because of the, the high academic um, standard and, and you want to improve that. So every university will really make sure that um, that if you are having any academic issues, you're having any study issues, that, that those are addressed or somewhere for you to go. There will be study skills classes because we, we totally understand that, you know, coming from another country, the, the way that you study, the, the structure of the studies, how you have to sit exams or write essays and that kind of thing might be different in the UK. So we make sure that, that all that kind of support is available to you. Um, now, it's not just about the academics, of course, once you have finished your studies, you'll probably quite like a job. It, I find it very helpful in uh, paying the bills. And the career service at the university will be there for you now. Yes, the career centre, and I think Doug later on is going to talk about employability, and um, the career centre will help you um, to, to, yeah, to, to find those jobs for after studies, but they can also help you with finding part-time work while you are a student. Um, it's very common, uh, actually, for students to work while they're in the UK, and of course, now you're, you're coming over on the student visa, you are allowed to work up to 20 hours a week. Um, alongside your studies, so the Career Centre can help you do that. They can also help you find internships, so maybe not just um, getting a job for, for some extra money, but getting internships which are connected to your studies and will help you improve your um, sort of career prospects. Um, if you have any sort of complaints or appeals, the university has student services that will there that will specifically uh, listen to you and make sure that you are really involved in in, in your own progress and, and what's happening at the university. So if, if there's anything going wrong or you're not happy about, then every university will have a very robust system where you can go and make sure that your voice is heard. Now, um, I put together sort of counselling, psychological um, and, and disability services there. So these are in place at every university to support you and make sure that you are basically being the best possible version of yourself while you're at a Russell Group University and that you are, um, there's just less and less for you to worry about and you can really focus on, on making the most of the experience. So, um, so if you have any, any disabilities, if you, if you think that you would like some sort of counselling or psychological help while you're here, every university will have that really in place for you and it's, it just takes a worry off of your so shoulders, shoulders even. There'll be obviously a finance team at the university who you can uh, speak with. They'll help you uh, about paying your tuition fees. If you're having any financial issues, then you can go to them. You can go to them if you maybe to work out a sort of installment plan for paying your tuition fees. I appreciate, you know, um, as, as we touched on earlier, now that um, European students are paying the, the full international um, tuition fees, that's sort of a bit of a shock to the system. Um, so the finance teams are on hand to, to try and lessen that shock. Um, if you're having financial you know, problems, oh, yeah. then most universities can help you out as well there. Um, health and wellbeing. So, um, John, the NHS, the National Health Service in the UK, the university can, can help guide you through that. Each of us and the Russell Group here will be very good for that. Um, the, of course, you'll be paying the international health surcharge now as part, immigration health surcharge as part of the, um, the, the student visa you'll be getting. But the university can help you sign up with the local doctor and most of the universities will have a doctor surgery on the campus as well. So if you're having any health uh, issues, they're right on your doorstep. They can, they can help you out. And one last thing I'll mention before I pass over, not before I die, before I pass over the, the microphone to the next uh, university, is that there will be an international student support team at each university. And these guys are the absolute experts um, at dealing with almost any problem you can imagine that you might have uh, coming over from another country to study in the UK. So these, these teams have been doing it for years and years and years for students from outside of the Europe, outside of EU. 
um, and now you guys have um, actually it's really great for you now have the opportunity to go and, and speak to them and, and get their their advice and get the benefit of their expertise whether that's visa issues immigration things whether it's like I said earlier about, about study skills whether it's about setting up a bank account whether it's absolutely anything at all they will be your or the, your sort of first port of call and they can also arrange to pick you up at the airport which I think is wonderful Cool. So that's my few minutes. And I will pass you over to the University of Nottingham, I believe. Hello, everybody. I don't think I'm able to turn my video on either. So I'll just carry on like this. Um, my name's Yelena and I'm from Nottingham. Okay, that's great. Okay. okay, my name's Yelena and I'm from the University of Nottingham. And I'm going to talk to you today about um, university accommodation in the UK. I think the first thing to say about the accommodation is that there is plenty of student accommodation available in the UK in general, and it really forms part of the offer for universities. The university halls are, of residence are typically either owned and managed by the university, or the university may have a partnership with a private accommodation provider. Um, as I should also mention as well that if students don't want to stay in university arranged accommodation, there are also private halls of um, residence that you might want to explore or a private rent, privately rented house or flat. Uh, the student accommodation can be based on campus if, it, if, you if it's a campus university, but also off campus, very close to the university. Some universities have accommodation villages, which are like a small campus of student housing. Um, in general, in the UK, universities guarantee students a room in university arranged accommodation for the first year of the course. Um, some universities also offer a guarantee for a longer period for international universities. But that is really dependent on the university, so you would need to look um, at what their provision is. To be eligible for the accommodation guarantee, students need to have firmly accepted the offer of a course place at that particular university, um, which means making the university their firm choice in UCAS. And they also need to apply for the accommodation by the deadline given. Uh, so applying for accommodation, Universities will set a specific date when their, their accommodation applications open. You won't have to wait until you have your results to apply, but you do need to have received an offer from the university from your course. Um, the offer can be either conditional or unconditional. And following that, you need to have chosen the university as your firm choice in UCAS. You will be able to select a firm choice accommodation and then some other choices and the number you can choose varies um, by university. So um, how universities allocate the accommodation also varies by university. So some universities allocate by date order on a first come first served basis, which really means that the earlier you apply, the more likely you are to receive your first choice of university. Um, others will allocate from a specific date, and some may even wait until they have received all results um, before allocating rooms. So what is the accommodation like? The halls of residence are made up of a number of flats, um, and the number of rooms in each flat can vary. The, room the rooms are generally single occupancy, um, so students get their own room in the majority of cases, and you don't have to share with anybody. A room can be either en suite with its own bathroom or it can share a bathroom with other rooms in the flat. You generally have that choice. And rooms are furnished, so you have your own study area within your room with a desk and shelves and also a bed and wardrobe and other living facilities. Um, so in terms of meal options, you can 
um, choose self-catered accommodation. So you would prepare all your own food in this case, or you can choose catered accommodation. So if you choose the catered accommodation, all the meals will be provided as part of your accommodation package. And the meals can be provided to specific dietary requirements as well. So for example, halal food, dairy-free food or gluten-free. Um, within the halls, you will also get um, some support. So in terms of pastoral support, you will have hall tutors, wardens, as well as hall managers. Um, there are communal leisure facilities to enable socialising um, in the in, amongst the residents of the halls. Halls are um, very secure with um, queue or card entry, and there's usually security on site as well. Um, things included are, are Wi Fi and internet. Um, bills are also included, and insurance for contents generally as well. So I think those are the main features about the accom university accommodation in the UK, but um, it's worth looking at. The, um, the details on each of the university's websites that you're interested in, because there can be variances between them. Okay. Um, so that's my part, and I will pass on now to the University of Warwick. Thank you very much, Dana, and I hope everyone's doing well this evening. I uh, hope you're enjoying the presentations. Uh, I'm very quickly now going to run you through teaching methodologies at UK universities and how they might be a little bit different to teaching methodologies elsewhere in Europe, and particularly what they look like in the Russell Group. So you have a quality assurance when you're coming to a UK university, and that's not limited to the 24 universities within our particular grouping. We have the Office for Students, which provides a regulatory framework for all of our institutions, no matter where you study in the UK. And we have the Quality Assurance Agency, which provides uh, additional checks, uh, a uh, an additional uh, set of uh, standards that universities work to so that you know that the teaching you're getting is of a high calibre and will count uh, and carry weight for when you go into the job market. We've already heard uh, from colleagues, including Doug at Edinburgh, um, about, oh, sorry, Mark at Glasgow, the right person, uh, Mark at Glasgow, about uh, the quality of the research that we have. Uh, and the degree of research excellence that the Russell Group in particular has, with more than two thirds of its research being uh, world leading. You will therefore be being taught by, uh, and you will be working with academics who are subject specialists, uh, the sorts of academics who are not just digesting and uh, repackaging other people's ideas, but academics who are themselves uh, at the forefront of new uh, terrain, who are investigating new areas of knowledge and who are themselves in some cases uh, active researchers at the very forefront of their field. You have the research excellence framework which you can look up to see which universities are the most research intensive and are the best regarded for research quality. Uh, you will see many of our universities in the top 10 uh, and certainly the Russell Group is at the forefront uh, of research happening in the UK. You can additionally now look at the teaching excellence framework, which gives you a similar measure for the standards that you can expect from teaching uh, across our universities. The final point on this slide uh, on industry policymaker links can be relevant to you because it means that you're not just exposed to researchers who have theory, you also have access to a set of universities that are involved with practice. So you may be looking at site visits to industry, it may be to heritage organisations, uh, to film producers and to creative industries, uh, to NGOs, uh, to the media uh, and many other groups besides. And our universities are directly informing UK government policy and indeed uh, international policy. So if you are looking at politics, if you're looking at international studies, if you're looking at business or economics, uh, you also have these sorts of links uh, built in. Looking then in a bit more detail at what to expect in my second slide, uh, you can then expect this from a Russell Group University, very typically. So very deliberately, we tend to fuse both theory and practice in the courses that we offer. This means that you don't just know how to do something, but you know why you're doing it. 
you understand the theoretical foundations of your discipline, which are often taught to you in year one, in a foundational year, so that you can then go on. And if you're a software engineer, or if you're a, a doctor or a nurse, or if you're someone who's working uh, in clinical psychology, uh, you understand the theory as well as how to then enact that in the real world. You will often see that we give you increasing amounts of module choice as you progress through your degree. Again, this is deliberate and it's built into your degree as a calculated way to give you ever more choice as you continue to make purposeful and personal choices that are right for you. Finally, you will see that we offer blended learning in the UK. And again, as a Russell Group, we very much encourage this format for learning. It's not just about exams. It's not even just about essays. You will often see that you'll be writing things like policy papers. You'll be doing group projects, presentations, uh, potentially getting industry into your classroom to tell you how to think about real world problems and to become a problem solver. You could be looking at professional certificates uh, and in many cases we will have accredited degrees where industry itself has underwritten and under, uh, uh, yeah, underwritten really, um, the quality of what we're offering. So it's not just about academic regulators uh, giving us quality assurance, it's about knowing that your degree will carry weight in the wider world. Now, having name checked Doug, and I've written his name up above me here, uh, I am now going to hand over to Doug from Edinburgh to talk to you about employability and how that might look uh, at a Russell Group University. Great, thanks very much. And hello from Edinburgh, everyone. So yes, yeah, so I'm going to talk uh, very quickly about employability because ultimately we recognise that you want a good job after your degree and uh, you know, and allow that to uh, support you uh, during your, your studies. But how do we help you get there within the Russell Group? And our global reputation certainly helps. Uh, we represent among the best universities around for the employability of our graduates. And numerous studies have shown that our graduates are quicker to secure full-time employment than their peers at non-Russell Group universities whilst also earning a higher average starting salary. But our graduates are highly sought after by employers from all sectors, both nationally and internationally. And recognizing our graduates really for their high intellectual ability and also their attributes that they've developed while studying here. Uh, and also uh, a survey carried out last year by a uh, recruitment firm in the UK found that 83% of recent non-Russell Group graduates would not have been able to secure a graduate role without an accompanying internship. Whereas in fact, at the Russell Group, only 14% of our graduates uh, required that additional skill set uh, in applying for their first role. Because our universities invest heavily in various initiatives to ensure our graduates are workplace ready. This approach naturally champions formal education, complemented by research-led teaching and independent learning with opportunities such as live industrial projects and field work and placements. Studying with us means more than simply sitting in our lecture theatres or buried under books in our libraries, although that will happen at times. Um, but outside of the formal curriculum, for instance, we offer the likes of specialist advice for budding entrepreneurs, so helping students launch their own startups after they have finished their studies with us, inviting industry leaders onto campus during your studies to meet with students and share their own experiences of starting their particular companies. There are also lots of opportunities too for students to extend or add to their skills through the curriculum and by participating in extra or co-curricular activities. Uh, an example would be uh, the recent Formula Student, uh, which is an annual competition pitching universities against each other as they design and build a formula style race car uh, and demonstrate its potential in a series of rigorous tests and pitch their product to a hypothetical buyer. And this type of activity, plus the societies you join, the sports clubs that you're part of, the volunteering you undertake, can often be formally recognized by our universities. Uh, and that looks really good on your CV. 
because employers ultimately want more than a degree holder. They want a graduate with a range of skills and attributes who can thrive in the working world. And kind of going on to the, the next slide um, and talking about kind of what you need to do, um, because what do I mean by employability? Kind of been throwing that term around and really employability skills are defined as the transferable skills needed by an individual to make them employable. Um, and of course, your degree is going to provide you with a good technical understanding and subject knowledge, but there's more that employers look for, a particular set of skills that they want from their next employee in order for them to carry out the role to the best of their ability. So the employability aspect depends not just on your knowledge, skills and attributes um, that you pick up during your degree, but also how you as an individual use those assets and how you present them to employers. We can only do so much. Uh, you have to take ownership of your own learning as well as reflect on what additional skills you need to develop and take advantage of the many opportunities available to you at the university. So these skills will include notably the likes of problem solving, initiative and being self-motivated, ability to work to deadlines, organizational skills, team working, the ability to learn and adapt, and particularly communication and interpersonal skills. Because by studying at a Russell Group University, you'll be part of a truly international community and being exposed to so many different perspectives and cultures offers you a fantastic opportunity to learn and develop your communication skills, but also your emotional intelligence to better understand the needs and wants of diverse groups of people and increasingly valued job skill. So that's my time up now. I'll uh, pass on to the University of Manchester to talk a bit further about how uh, the Russell Group universities will engage with industry. Thanks. Hi everyone, my name is Caroline and I work for the University of Manchester. I'm going to build on some of the content that Doug has just discussed and also touch a little bit on, on rankings as well. Um, and so my section is to do with the professional realms and, and commerce and how uh, universities and businesses work together um, and support each other in, in their aims. Um, so studying at, at a UK university can have a really positive impact on your future career plans. Generally speaking, Russell Group universities have very strong links with employers, um, as we've already heard, at local national and international level. Um, and that can be considered a unique selling point of uh, a UK degree, a, a UK university education. Um, so with the kind of uh, disclaimer, COVID notwithstanding, employers are involved in the life of the university in a number of different ways. Uh, one of those ways might be how they contribute to the development and delivery of our courses. Many degree programmes, especially scientific and vocational ones, have advisory boards, which include representatives from leading employers, this gives you the confidence as a student that what you are studying in the classroom is up to date or as up to date as it can be and also relevant to the world of work both in terms of the subject specific knowledge and also in terms of some of the transferable skills that we heard Doug talking about. In some cases employers will act as guest lecturers for some of our courses in the Russell Group, they'll come to deliver content on a specific topic where they have expertise and this allows you to make connections with employers on campus, but also enables you to benefit from their knowledge and the techniques that they are using in their companies in the in the present day. Employers also come to universities campuses to participate in careers exhibitions and skills se sessions. These can either be specific to your field um, and or they can be generalist. So everything from uh, an event for IT specialists through to um, maybe something for like the third sector, which is charities and, and non-governmental organisations, or they might also be sessions which are applicable to all students. So, for example, sessions on, on communication skills. There's also a report which is published annually called High Flyers, and this measures how top employers engage with universities and Russell Group universities tend to perform particularly strongly in that report. 
Many of the courses in the UK will also include an option for industrial or professional experience, um, as Doug also mentioned in the previous slides, and these are effectively integrated internship years, can, which can play a really significant part in your overall employability. Your internship uh, employer may offer you a, a full time job at the end of your studies, but even if they don't, this is a, an experience that's going to make a really significant contribution to your CV and may help you find another job elsewhere when you graduate. Um, our career services can also be considered a, a really major benefit of studying in the UK. These are dedicated teams who provide employability support to students. Um, in our case at Manchester, it's from the moment that you arrive up until after two years after you graduate and many other universities will have a similar offering as well. So as well as being able to help you get that first job after graduation, we can also help with future career planning and, and making that next step. Um, and this kind of support varies, um, but it can be everything from the sort of standard services that you might expect, like CV checks or interview practice, through to connecting you up with alumni from your university um, who, it, who are working in the field that you are interested in, maybe through something like a mentorship programme. For scientific, vocational and business courses, um, at many Russell Group universities, you'll find that your degree kind of fast tracks your career after you graduate. So where a course is recognized by a professional body, this can help you achieve chartered status faster in industries like engineering or gain exceptions from professional exams in subjects like accountancy. Um, it can also further enhance the transferability of your degree um, to other parts of the world. So, for example, our business school at Manchester is triple accredited. It's one of only a handful of universities uh, who are able to, to say that. So uh, your degree would be recognised in, in multiple geographies. And when researching your university choices prior to making your, your UCAS application, we do really strongly recommend that you look at things like accreditation alongside subject and uh, institutional rankings to help determine which are going to be the most advantageous choices for you. The impact of UK universities is also measured by uh, graduate outcome research. So these statistics can also be a really important part of your university research. Universities which typically have high rates of employment at the right level and further study are likely to be more advantageous UCAS choices. The universities publish this information um, at both at institutional level and by course on their website. So for Manchester, this information can be found on our course profile pages under careers. Um, and in many cases, you'll also be able to find out more about the kinds of organisations our graduates go into and what their job titles are. And that will give you a really good idea about the future career prospects following studying with, with one of us in, in the Russell Group. Um, and with that, I'm going to hand over to, to the next presenter to talk about jargon. That's great. Thank you very much, uh, Caroline, for that. Um, and thank you very much, everyone, for joining this evening. It's a pleasure to, to speak with you this evening. So I'm going to speak um, very briefly, um, because I'm conscious of time, about um, university rankings, uh, as well as jargon. Uh, so by that, I mean very specific, subject-specific language that often surrounds uh, universities and the application process, etc. And I'm going to look at really what that means in practice. Um, but for this first slide, I'm going to talk very uh, quickly about the different kinds of rankings that you may come across um, and, and what they mean and, and what, what is their value, really, um, because it's quite subjective. So there are two types of rankings. So we've got global rankings as well as UK rankings. Um, and in effect, uh, you know, e each of these uh, different sets of rankings hold, holds different weight for different people. And as I said a moment ago, this is very much subjective and, and, and really uh, as applicants and as, as parents of influencing applications, you want to be thinking to yourself, uh, you know, how important are each of these rankings to me? So you can see there the three sort of key players in the global rankings for, for universities. And um, so the Times Higher Education uh, World University Rankings, um, the Academic Ranking of World Universities, often uh, referred to as the Shanghai Rankings, uh, Indeed, today, uh, Shanghai rankings were released for 2021 um, and the QS World University rankings. Um, and for the UK rankings, we have uh, sort of three, three sort of go to reference rankings, really, that uh, many of our institutions will, will publish our rankings in each of these on our web pages. So the Sunday Times, uh, sorry, the Times and the Sunday Times Good University Guide, 
the complete university guide as well as the guardian rankings now all of these different rankings um, assess very different metrics so if i could ask my colleagues to, to press the next bit and again uh, for the next bit yeah brilliant um, all of these rankings will assess uh, different metrics as i said and you can see some examples of how these rankings uh, you know are created for different subjects for different disciplines you know so sort of broader subject areas um, as well as sort of overall university rankings i mean it varies as you can see from things like continuation stats and that would be the the percentage of first year students that go on to study into their second and third and, and subsequent years um, everything from that to sort of student satisfaction levels um, so you know getting real direct uh, information from students studying at the university um, and then on to things like employability statistics for example how many of the students at a certain university uh, have gone on to graduate level employment within x number of months and some of them will be within six months and some will be for example within 15 months so you can see here there's a real range of um of metrics used uh, in all of these rankings and so in order to utilize the rankings effectively um you should really sort of ask yourself how you know what's important to me um and what will help me to decide um in in my application process um you know look at the subjects um individually look at the university web pages for each subject to see how those are ranked as well so um, I could go on about that for a lot longer, but I'm going to go on to the next slide to talk a little bit about um, university jargon. Um, and you can see here what I mean by jargon. Um, and lots of this language you may be very familiar with from having started perhaps the UCAS process, things like unconditional offers or conditional offers and exactly what they mean. Firm, um, my colleagues have mentioned this earlier on, firm choice, insurance choice, effectively first and second choice. So what, what I'm not going to do is, is uh, you know, <laughs> give, a, give a definition of each of these um, terminologies and, and jargon, um, but rather bring onto your radar that there, there's a sort of plethora of different um, terms that you might come across um, that, that may throw you off piste and, and perhaps, you know, cause a, a panic or, you know, what does that mean? I don't know. Um, ultimately, the point is, is to, to, to use university information. I mean, there's an example there, a PDF that we've produced at the University of Exeter, to really go into detail about what all of these mean in practice um, and, and to give you really synonyms and, and other other words, um, less complicated perhaps language to deal with those. Um, effectively, just to have it on your radar that, uh, yeah, it's, it's often much less confusing than it may come across uh, as if you've not seen the, the language before. Um, but yeah, I think I've gone a slightly over time. So I'm gonna pass on uh, to my colleague, um, to present on the next slide. Um, so over to the University of Liverpool. Thank you, Taylor. Um, hello, everyone. My name's Jay Louise. Um, I'm from the University of Liverpool, and I'm just going to wrap up on this session tonight um, by talking you through how to choose a university. Um, so my colleagues speaking this evening have gone through lots of really interesting and useful points that you may wish to use as a guide um, to guide you through the process of really doing some research and deciding what different factors are important to you when you're deciding which university is for you. Um, because it's a very big decision. It's where you're potentially, if you're an undergraduate student, are going to be for the next three or four or five years, depending on your course. Um, so, and there's lots of different factors for you to consider. Um, so, what I would say is use this as a guide and start to spend some time developing an understanding um, of the different services that are offer. So, uh, are, are on offer rather. Um, so, different services, the facilities that each university have. Um, and just the general culture of the university as well. Um, as Although we're all Russell Group universities, we all may be quite different in terms of the culture um, or in terms of the location as well. Um, our campuses are like and what we have to offer in that respect. Um, so one thing, piece of advice I would give you is to choose a university that feels right for you um, and meets all of your needs specifically. Um, so although Taylor's just talked us very well through all of the different rankings that there are, um, and of course these uh, take into lots of different metrics, uh, what rankings can't do is determine a best of the best university. So they all look at different factors um, and there isn't just one ranking that can determine the best university or indeed the best university for you either. Um, so 
our advice, I think, tonight after this session would be to start doing that research. Uh, and you've already, already started already because, of course, you're here tonight. Um, you've made a great first step by attending this webinar. Um, so if I could have the next slide, please. And I'm just going to talk you through um, some other um, resources that might be helpful to you. Um, so there are lots of um, UK university information websites that are very impartial. Um, so UCAS, we've already mentioned, of course, is where you make your undergraduate application. Um, but it also has a course listing for all of the different courses uh, that my colleagues have mentioned. There's a, a wealth of different courses available. Um, there is another website as well, uh, very similar, uh, but called discoveruni.gov.uk, um, which I'd also recommend that you take a look at. Rankings, of course, we've just heard are extremely useful. Um, so do compare the, all the different rankings that we've mentioned tonight. Uh, look at the subject rankings as well, as there are rankings for uh, universities overall, but there are also rankings per subject. Um, of course, when you've uh, started thinking about some specific universities, um, you can uh, wickle that down then to some university websites, and then you can start looking in more detail into things such as module details, um, co specific course details, what it is that you will study um, as part of that course, and maybe you would like to compare courses that may look similar on the surface side by side um, with different universities to determine the right one for you. Um, we also have virtual tours um, on different university websites. Obviously, uh, we would hope to have in the future open days and we hope very much that uh, students, if they're able to travel, um, can come and visit us. But if you can't, um, you know, due to the current situation or uh, traveling isn't to the UK isn't possible for you, um, then obviously we will have all of those virtual tours. And one of the benefits of um, obviously COVID is that we have lots of different online resources for you as well. Um, to, so that you can um, really access the university and find out more about it before you come. Um, for applicants a little bit further down the line, uh, many universities also have applicant um, online events, so applicant days, uh, where you can take part in different uh, different. Um, opportunities, different activities with the school and find out more about what it will be like to study that course. That's for applicants and offer holders, uh, when you may wish to decide uh, when you've got offers, which university to go to. Um, of course, attending webinars uh, with IEC like this one, um, but also approaching universities as well and seeing what um, what webinars they might have. They may have subject specific, specific webinars. They may have webinars hosted by your representative for Spain, uh, which is what um, we on this call today are. So do connect with us. Um, you can also chat to students. So many universities um, offer some sort of service on their website uh, where you can chat to our current students. So at the University of Liverpool, and I know many other universities as well, um, have the Unibuddy service, um, but many other universities may have a different but similar um, resource on their website for you to chat to uh, current students, ask them what it's like um, to study at that university. Again, as I've just mentioned, you can obviously contact a university representative. I'm sure any of us here tonight would be more than happy uh, to take questions by email um, and we'll be able to share that later as well. Um, following us on social media too, you'll often see lots of different um, you know, activities and what our students are up to uh, and you can get a good idea of sort of student life and what the uh, community is like on campus as well um, by following a university social media accounts. Um, also, so aside from that, student blogs is another great way to connect um, with the students um, ahead of coming with uh, offer holders, oh, sorry, with stu current students. Um, and you might wish to, um, you know, read a little bit more about what student life um, is going to be like. And indeed, watch vlogs as well on our website. Um, and many, I'm sure many of the universities here have similar resources for you. Um, so that's all from me. I'm going to pass it back over to our hosts. Uh, to continue. Thank you very much, Jay Luis. Now we're going to open the floor to each university that is going to use one minute to explain why you should go to that uni university in particular. We're going to start with Cardiff University. Great. Okay, right, I'll do as quick as I can. So Cardiff University established in 1883. We're one of the larger universities in the UK with about 32,000 students. We've got an international reputation with quality, with many of our schools in the top five or the top 10 in the UK in their respective subject areas. Uh, we rank very highly in the REF, 
research excellence framework that was mentioned earlier. Accommodation guaranteed. It's one of the most affordable cities in the UK. And in my view, it's the best city in the UK. I've lived in London, Paris, um, Tokyo, and I've made my home in Cardiff. It's not too big, not too small. And we can hold mega events, like things like the UEFA uh, Cup final, big uh, sports events, but it's small enough to be friendly and welcoming as well. So please come to Cardiff. Oh, my camera works, sorry. <laughs> um, so just in one minute, why come to Durham? Durham is located in the northeast of England and it's a really beautiful part of the country. You're right next to the coast. We have some stunning beaches. If you wanted to, you could travel along the river, cycle, walk, and within about half an hour from the center of Durham, you could be in the middle of the countryside. So it's a really lovely place to live and work and study. The city center of Durham is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The cathedral of the castle that you can see in that picture in the corner is part of that UNESCO site. And because of that, we have a city bustling with tourists and students. We have all the cafes, cinemas, bars, clubs, anything you could want from a really vibrant city, but we are in the heart of the countryside. So if you want to relax, you can do that too. The university itself generally ranks very highly academically. We usually, in the UK, we're usually in the top five and in the top 100 in the world. Some of our subjects are also in the world. As well as great academic life, our students particularly love the collegiate system at Durham. The colleges don't just provide accommodation, they provide a unique community spirit. So all of our students are a member of one of our 17 colleges as well as the university itself. And they are a member for life. And the number of students we have graduating and coming back to be involved in their collegiate life shows you just how much they really enjoyed their time here. So please come to Durham. <laughs> Fab, so yeah, where to begin with UCL? Um, we are a top ranked university in the centre of London. We're in a very historic area called Bloomsbury. So that's a five minute walk from the British Museum, which I'm sure many of you might have visited before. Um, there's all sorts to explore in the area. So UCL's own museums, you've got the British Library, infinite eating options, cafes, bookshops, lots of really nice green spaces as well. Now we offer over 400 degree programmes in total across a very broad range of areas including some of the more interdisciplinary programmes that bring together a few different subject areas. So things like the BASC in Arts and Sciences, we have a programme in Data Sciences, European Social and Political Studies, to name just a few of them. So that is definitely one of our strengths. Now at UCL, we like to call our academics and our students brave thinkers uh, and doers. So it really is a place where if you've got an idea, whether that's for a new business or a new initiative, um, UCL can provide you with a lot of support in developing that idea. And, you know, we've got an innovation enterprise team, for example, which has helped launch over 70 student startup companies in the last two years alone. That's about 20 times shorter than my usual presentation about UCL. So what I'll do is I'll post a couple of links in the chat where you can find out a lot more about, um, about the university. Thank you. Thanks, Yasmin. Um, so why the University of Birmingham? I am extremely biased towards Birmingham, having studied at the university and stayed in the city after I graduated. I think it is a brilliant place to study, but you can see for yourself, you can have a look on our website where you could take a virtual tour of our university campus, see what the accommodation's like, have a tour from one of our students around the different buildings. It's a historic university, one of the founding members of the Russell Group and next to a very vibrant, colourful city of Birmingham that is just on the doorstep and a short train journey into the centre of town. We've got a train station on campus and the largest freestanding clock tower in Europe. So that is another sort of plus of Birmingham, as I'm sure that is a deciding factor for where you want to go to university. Uh, so that's a short introduction of Birmingham. And I will pass on to my colleague and encourage you to find out more about the university on our website. Uh, like Mary, I'm very biased about, about Cambridge, um, which perhaps you'll forgive me in, in being. Um, I think 
simply put, I'm very fortunate to say that Cambridge is, is one of the best universities in the world. You know, we offer excellent teaching, globally respected research, uh, plenty of post degree prospects through, through our career service, um, and also through our, our colleges network, a place to call home. So we're currently hosting around 23,000 students um, from more than 140 countries, including about 150 from Spain. Uh, in terms of degree courses, we cover fairly traditional academic areas. Um, and one other thing I suppose to mention is that most Cambridge undergraduates are guaranteed accommodation for the duration of their degree through our colleges, some of which you can see in uh, the picture in, in front of you. I think it's worth saying a bit more about the colleges. Um, like Durham, they are much more than blocks of accommodation. They're very much their own community where students, um, as well as living, also um, tend to eat, to play sports, do a lot of their socialising, get academic and pastoral support throughout their time at the university, um, and also often be taught in small groups. So some of our unique uh, small group tuition takes place in the colleges as well. And, and really, I think it just summarise all that a college is the hub of a student's experience at Cambridge, um, where the, much of what they'll need to access during their time at the university and um, they can find there. I'll leave it there um, and post a link to our virtual tour, which I think is the best place to start um, when looking at Cambridge for the first time and finding out um, more about how we're set up. Okay, hello everyone. So I'll give you a quick whistle stop overview of the University of Edinburgh. Um, so really, from unlocking the secrets of the universe to cloning sheep to building robots and devising technology used in today's smartphones, our groundbreaking research informs the teaching you receive. And this is hugely exciting because it means our degree programs are responding to global challenges and equipping you with the tools to tackle these problems yourselves. We offer one of the widest subject spreads in the UK, whilst we teach more European languages than any other university in Scotland. We uh, also give you the opportunity to meet people from all over the world. Our international community comprises over 44,000 students from over 150 countries worldwide. And this rich diversity in multi multiculturalism is reflected across our staggering range of societies, catering, catering for all levels of interests. We're also one of the leading sports universities in the UK, offering opportunities for beginners right up to performance athletes. And you receive all of this whilst living in one of the world's most beautiful, culturally rich and inspiring cities. Edinburgh's compact size makes it really easy to get around. And as the world's festival city, you're seldom far from an exciting activity. It's not just a fun destination though, um, we're also Scotland's financial centre, and a booming tech and startup capital, offering endless opportunities for our students. Uh, like others, I'll pop in uh, a couple of links, uh, particularly to our virtual visit, so you can get a real sense of what the city's like, uh, as well as what our various campuses uh, are like in and around the city. But I'll stop talking now because I could talk for ever and ever uh, about glorious Edinburgh, and I'll pass on to the next university. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much, uh, Doug. So we have one minute um, and I'll be very terse and brief uh, about what EXA has to offer. I mean, like colleagues have said, um, you know, their, their cities are, are the best. It's the same for EXA, it's also the best city in the UK. Um, there's, some, there's some figures and some stats on the screen, but broadly speaking, um, EXA uh, is a university based in the southwest of the UK with stunning campuses across Devon and Cornwall. Uh, consistently voted, you know, the, the most sort of popular and, and the, the best destination for domestic and and and, and tourism really in general to uh, to the UK. Many of you who have visited the UK may have visited the Southwest before. Um, Cornwall indeed is playing host to the G7 summit this year in just a couple of weeks. Actually, um, we're we're a medium-sized city in the UK, so about 140,000 people in Exeter itself. Um, we've got students from over 150 different countries, including about 1,400 uh, European students. Uh, so a very vibrant European community um, on our campuses. Um, I won't talk for much further about it. I'm going to post something into the chat so that you can get in touch and book onto our open days uh, and pass over to my colleague to speak about their university. Thank you. 
Thanks, Taylor. Um, so, yeah, a, a very quick spiel about the University of Glasgow. Um, so, so like uh, Doug talked about from Edinburgh, we are uh, located in Scotland, in the north of the UK, um, Glasgow being um, Scotland's biggest um, city, with, with Edinburgh being the, the capital. Uh, so the University of Glasgow was established back in 1451, so we are one of, um, one of the UK's ancient universities, and we are also one of the world's top 100 universities as well, according to both QS and Times Higher Education rankings. Uh, we're also very happy to say that we were awarded uh, the UK University of the Year Award from, from Times Higher Education this year. Um, I'm a biased source, as you can probably tell from my accent, but don't take my word for it. Rough Guides this year voted Glasgow the world's friendliest city, and that is something that, that we do get feedback from our students about the warm welcome that they receive in Scotland and, and, and in Glasgow as well. Uh, as others have said, we're quite a large university, so we've got around 30,000 students from over 140 different countries studying with us, including approximately 300 students from Spain who are currently studying with us um, at Glasgow. Uh, quickly, just to mention, uh, Glasgow is a UNESCO city of music and a fantastic city to be a student. Lots of green space, fantastic shopping, uh, great art scene, great culture, uh, so much to do in your spare time. Um, and just very quickly to mention that slightly different in Scotland in that our undergraduate degree programmes tend to be four years in length as opposed to three. Uh, what that means is you normally begin by studying a broad range of subjects, um, allowing you to, to try and test out different subjects, and then you begin to specialise um, as, you, as you progress through, through your degree. Um, but that's probably enough for me. As the others have said, I'll pop some links in, in the chat and I'll pass over to, uh, to my next colleague. Thank you. Okay, so apologies for the delay there. Um, so the University of Liverpool um, is one of the founding members of the Russell Group in D as well. Um, we were established in 1881 um, and we're actually, a fun fact of the evening, the original red brick university. So when you um, when you hear the term red brick, a university, um, which is often used as a colloquial term for the Russell Group, um, University of Liverpool is actually the first university to build its university out of red bricks, which you can see in the picture on the screen now. Um, so we offer uh, the three faculties you can see um, on the screen um, and similarly to many of the other universities we are consistently ranked um, very highly um, in the top um, 200 worldwide. Liverpool itself is a fantastic city um, for international students, an extremely welcoming city um, and we are a city centre campus, um, very very student friendly uh, cosmopolitan city of Liverpool. Um, the um, skyline of Liverpool, which is actually very famous, is actually a world um, UNESCO heritage site as well. Um, and we were recently voted the best place in Britain to be a graduate. And also, similarly to Glasgow in the Rough Guides uh, 2021 survey, we were voted the fourth friendliest city in the world. Um, so head to Glasgow and Liverpool if you want very, very friendly welcomes. Um, we are a very global university um, of sort of uh, medium size, but on the large side with 33,000 students um, and we have 8,000 international students from over 130 countries. Okay so I'll wrap up there and I'll hand over to the next university. Hi everyone um, this is Caroline again here I'm going to kind of uh, rattle through a, a quick introduction to Manchester. Um, so uh, I've put some stats here on the screen which I'm not going to kind of read through one by one with you but I think the the thing that really makes Manchester unique is um, well that there's three things really so um, first is is reputation so it's to do with our institutional and subject rankings um, some of which you can see here on the screen but also the kind of brand and, and recognition element um, of Manchester. Secondly, size and diversity. So we're a very large university. Um, we're organised into three faculties, humanities, which includes our business school, biology, medicine and health and science and engineering. Um, we have around about 40,000 students from over 160 different countries. Um, and then there's also the kind of size and diversity element of the city of Manchester as well, um, which also brings me on to the, the third kind of unique uh, aspect, which is location. So we're right in the middle of, of the UK. It's a perfect base to explore the rest of the country, really well connected in terms of public transport to some of the other major cities in terms of connection to nature. Um, and we have a beautiful civic campus. So you have kind of best of both worlds, in, in my opinion, you've got 
the feeling of really being at university while you're on campus and then you're just you know 20 minute walk from the the capital of the north as as we like to say in Manchester so yeah really fun friendly place to be be a student as well um and I'll hand over to the next presenter Hello, um, I'm just going to run through some of these. Um, I'll pick up the most important ones. So um, we're fourth in the UK for employ employability, according to the High Flyers report, which um, means that we are the fourth um, most targeted university by leading graduate employers in the UK. We're also um, top, in the world top 70 ranking um, for employability by QS. So we're Sports University of the Year for 2021. And this is the second time in three years that we've been received this award. Um, we have amazing facilities at the university and we encourage sport at all levels. It's accessible to everybody who wants to be involved. We also have sports scholarships for elite athletes and participate in over 70 different sports. And we're the third most sustainable university in the world. And um, we've consistently been in the top four since the ranking started. Nottingham itself is aiming to be a carbon neutral city by 2028. Um, and this is in line with the university's aims as well. Um, and finally, talk a bit about our campuses. So we have the campuses in the UK, which are award winning campuses based in Nottingham. Um, but we also have campuses in China and Malaysia. And this is a fantastic opportunity for students in the UK to spend time at those campuses whilst they are studying in the UK. And I'll pass on to um, Southampton next. Thank you. So really quickly, um, Southampton uh, is on the south coast of England. Um, so in terms of weather, it's one of the warmest and sunniest city in the UK. We're also very close to London, so it only takes 70 minutes on a train to go to London and we're really well connected to other cities. Um, the other thing I want to point out is that we're a campus based university, so you can see a really beautiful picture of our green campus in Southampton here on the slide. Uh, we are a very international university. Um, there's over 26,000 students studying at Southampton and 30% of students come from everywhere in the world from more than 135 different countries. And finally, in terms of our rankings, we're top 100 global university, top 15 in the UK. We're number one in the UK for civil engineering and for electrical and electronic engineering. And uh, that's all for me. And I'll also pop in some useful links um, in the chat for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Elodie. So uh, this is University of Warwick. Uh, again, I will keep this short. So we are very much a top 10 UK university, top 20 in Europe. Uh, and we have nine of our subjects in the UK top five. Uh, things that define Warwick would be the flexibility of our degree options so that you're put in the driving seat uh, in contrast to some of the universities you've heard from this evening, we're a, a young university, uh, a modern uh, new generation plate glass university that was set up in the mid 1960s. And we built our reputation with industry. Uh, many businesses and many multinational corporations have a presence on our campus. And that campus, as well as having science parts and business, is very much student owned uh, and student run. So you have a protected uh, student focused environment to learn, to study, to play, uh, to go and have drinks, to have food and enjoy yourselves. In terms of location, we're not in one of the big cities that you perhaps know, uh, but we are right between the two largest cities in England. So 60 minutes by train from Coventry to the southeast, you have London, uh, and 20 minutes to the northwest, you have uh, another brilliant modern city uh, in Birmingham. Birmingham International Airport is one of the easiest to use anywhere in Europe, uh, and you can get to us just one stop on the train to Coventry and then a direct bus to campus. Uh, like everyone else, I'll pop some links in the chat uh, and please do check them out and join our open day. 
Hi everyone, congratulations if you're still here. Um, <laughs> and so yes, York, you should come to York if it is the right university for you. So my, my colleagues earlier have said, do your research um, and pick what, what feels right for you. There are some statistics on the screen, but life is not all about statistics. I mean, I say that despite having two maths degrees. Um, but yeah, York is the safest city in England and Wales. It has the lowest crime rate of any university city. So if you, you know, if you like being safe, I would uh, recommend you come to York. Um, if you like birds, there are lots and lots of geese and ducks on campus. We're, we're very famous for our birds. Um, and um, I was inspired by Mary's um, recommendation for Birmingham. And I can tell you that York has the largest Gothic cathedral in Northern Europe. So if you are a fan of large Gothic cathedrals, then I highly recommend you, you come to the University of York. And I will pass back to our host, IEC. Thank you very much, Scott. And thank you, every university representative. It has been amazing. And now we open the floor for questions. Uh, you can ask them also in Spanish. I think you have been asking a lot of questions and they have already been answered in the chat. But anyway, we have like some minutes left for some questions. Also, if you want, you can contact us in our email and in our phone number uh, and we can answer your questions. Alison, I don't know, I can't see the chat. I don't know if it's any last minute question. Mm -hmm. I can't seem to be able to turn my my camera on, um, but I think between the reps at the, you know, all of our lovely university reps, um, and I've been answering a lot of questions privately, we've had quite a few people um, writing to me uh, privately with questions, I think we've actually answered everything. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the chat just our um, our phone and our email address, because like Scott uh, said before, um, you know, choosing a university is, is very much about finding the right fit for you. And that's something that at IEC we would be able to do um, and we would do it very happily. So if you've got any questions, um, specific or not, feel free to get in touch with us and we can help you out. Yes, tomorrow we will send these, uh, the recording of this uh, session and we will be very happy, like Alison said, to answer your questions. Thank you very much. And I think we're gonna wrap it up here. Thank you very much to everybody. Thank you to everyone.